Thanks for coming. Uh, we have a faculty forum this afternoon on commercialization and knowledge transfer. And um, I um, kind of give you an overview of what we uh, want to accomplish today. I mean, the, the main goal of uh, today's forum is really to kind of bring the campus up to speed on what we've been doing, but also to, to uh, signal in a very uh, real way, um, you know, that we're elevating uh, the the attention paid to and the prioritization of commercialization activities at the University of Maine. So what I want to do is start with a little bit about why. Uh, look at the question, why are we increasing the focus on it uh, right now? So I'll, I'll make a few comments um, about that. And then uh, what I want to do is walk you through, um, or summarize for you, uh, about a year's worth of work that we've done on looking at commercialization uh, at the University of Maine. Um, Starting uh, last uh, summer of uh, 16, uh, June 2016, roughly through July 2017, a group of us put some concentrated effort into, uh, into that and brought some resources in to try to understand um, how we can do this uh, at an accelerated um, uh, uh, pace and at a, at, a, at a different level. And again, I'll, I'll say, that's not that we're doing it bad. We're doing it actually quite well. <laughs> but um, like many research universities, um, we're trying to elevate our game uh, in, this, in this sphere. So I'll tell you what we did, uh, and then I'll summarize the key, um, the key findings from our work, and then the concrete steps that we've taken moving forward. Everything I'm going to talk about is in this report, uh, which you can link to in, uh, uh, on the Provost website around the faculty forum. But I'll go over sort of the key, key aspects of what we found and what are the directions that we think or we know we're moving, the kind of steps we're taking right now uh, to do that. It, obviously, uh, we want to hear your questions and um, you know, your thoughts about, about this direction. So let me start by just, uh, like I said, I want to give a, a context. You know, why now, why should the University of Maine be focusing increased attention on commercialization of uh, intellectual property and knowledge transfer? Um, well, some of it has to do with what's going on uh, nationally, uh, and uh, there's a lot going on nationally. So I'll first say um, uh, the mo different colors of these states um, means nothing. It just happens to be a graphic <laughs> here. So, uh, but it, that is the United States of America, if you didn't um, recognize it, and it gave you the national picture. So what, what's going on? Well, um, you know, the key thing that's going on is that um, we're looking at federal's, the federal government's investment uh, in research. And for the, a decade, you know, there was steady growth uh, in the government's uh, investment. Starting in 2011, uh, that trend started moving in the opposite direction, where funding uh, is flat or going down each year uh, from the federal government. Now, this, this graph, our data from going through 2015, uh, if you extend this out, it's pretty much flat for uh, the next uh, few fiscal years. If you, I'm sure you do, read the paper, watch the news, um, the, the, um, the, uh, the signs coming from our current uh, administration and, and, the, uh, uh, and the, the current Congress are not particularly encouraging about investment uh, in R&D at the federal level. Um, and, uh, you know, there are, you know, like everything that happens in Congress, there's a lot, a lot of uh, transaction. We have some real champions in our legislative, uh, in, our, in our federal legislation. Uh, Senator Collins and uh, Senator King in particular are strong advocates um, for R&D investment. Um, but um, they're part of a bigger body. So the picture is uh, challenging uh, in terms of the, the traditional areas to look for, for research. This graph bears a little uh, explanation, but it, what it, one thing it does is it narrows the, the scope here. So now we're looking at, uh, where's my pointer? Oh, here it is. Looking at this period from 2010 to 2015. And what you can think about this graph is it's about how have research institutions, universities, and other research institutions responded to this change in federal funding. So the orange line is, um, you know, that's really the same picture you saw before, uh, getting up to a peak in 2011 and then working its way down. So this is all relative to 2010 dollars. So 
In 2015, it was essentially flat, 101 percent of the 2010 dollars from the federal government, and then it's been flat all along. State investments, uh, this, and again, these are national data, state, state investments uh, went down, sort of, this is again uh, still the impact of the recession, coming back up to be basically flat. There's not an expectation that these areas are going to, going to change. Now, the area we want to focus on, today's conversation is what I'm going to call the, the fuchsia uh, uh, or pink uh, line, uh, and that's commercial or corporate investment in R&D. Now, again, this is as a percent change from 2010. There has been an increase and also then in the other category, which is primarily private foundations uh, investment in R&D. The other big change, which I, of course I can't ignore, is that's institutional investment. So that's like here at the University of Maine. That, our example of that would be, would be the um, University of Maine Systems Research Reinvestment Fund. So reallocating funds from other areas into research. So we've done that. These data suggest that we're not alone that other uh, research institutions around the United States are, re are reinvesting. So again, I do want to just, uh, so there's not a misconception um, about this slide. This, these numbers are percent change from 2010. They're not absolute uh, numbers, so you shouldn't think what institutions are putting on 140 percent of what the federal government is. That's obviously not right. These are the exact amount, are the amounts in 2015. So the federal government putting about $38 billion uh, into it versus institutions all across the United States glommed together uh, close to 17 uh, billion. But it's the change that I want to draw your attention to. The, these data were put together by the, the consulting group EAB, um, Education Advisory Board, and, and provided um, you know, this uh, snapshot data about what's going on nationally. And then this is their kind of take on the outlook looking forward. Okay, in the state, there really is unlikely to anticipate growth um, in the federal government. Uh, likely de deterioration or slow recovery. The greatest impact on growth is in the corporate uh, sector in terms of R&D investment. Uh, this is similar in terms of the other category, which again primarily is private foundations. Institutions have responded the fastest, but their, their uh, statement, and I would agree with it certainly as it relates to the University of Maine, is that it's not sustainable. Um, uh, uh, to be able to, to replace federal funds by institutions reallocating funds into R&D. So again, I, I wanted to take a second to talk about this because it's a, the, the larger uh, national uh, picture. Uh, the, bringing it down there to the, the good old state of Maine, um, you know, another way to answer the question is, you know, why should we be focusing more now, uh, more attention now on commercialization and knowledge transfer uh, has to do with our, our more local picture. So, our board of trustees identified five, or, sorry, four priority, key priorities for the next five years about a year ago. Um, and uh, you know, so these three are fine and we're focusing and working on all these. But the fourth one uh, is a key priority from our system board of trustees and that's to support Maine through research and economic development. And if we look at the um, University of Maine system, you know, the lion's share of that responsibility is at the University of Maine. We are the research university uh, in the state of Maine. We're the, we're the research university in the system. Uh, USM does some R&D work, um, and uh, they're certainly contributors to it. The smaller campuses do it very, at a very small level, but the lion's share of this is going to be at, a, at our institution. And so it, it's a challenge, if you will, from the Board of Trustees to say, okay, um, you know, we need to do more uh, on R&D. Uh, uh, we'll return to the conversation with the Board of Trustees at the end of this uh, presentation because it has to do with uh, future directions. But they have said this is a priority. So then you can then say, well, and then narrower still, if the national picture is, you know, federal funds are challenging, the state picture is, we, you know, the, the, our, our governing body is saying this is good, should be a top priority. Um, why, at our, why with our, at our university? What, what are the factors that suggest it's worthwhile paying a lot of attention to this here? And I, I just put a couple of things. One is the broad category is that uh, we're succeeding, and that's the royal we. I like to say that. I, I, uh, you know, this is our, our research faculty, uh, our research centers. We are moving up in, um, at uh, levels we haven't before in terms of relationships with corporations moving uh, intellectual property, 
uh, out to market, uh, licensing fees returning to, to the university. So I just took a couple of, these are just examples of the evidence for that. Um, makes me think I missed, I, I have an older version of this slide up there. There's another point I'll make which I, is missing here. But um, this, uh, so this, just this year, uh, over just about half a million, or, yeah, half a million dollars uh, in licensing revenue has come back uh, to the university. There's a slide, go, point that goes right here that talks about the uh, um, number of uh, cooperative agreements we have with companies and how much it has increased in the past five years. I don't have the number uh, memorized, but it's, it's uh, w w a wicked uh, big, as we, we, we would say. It's, a, it's quite a jump in the last... Uh, One hundred and eighty to three hundred and eighty-nine over the last five years in terms of number of partnerships we have uh, with companies. We have again. I just put some examples. Uh, out of last, the Environetics Technology Corporation, a spin-off company, uh, with a couple of our faculty at the lead in the Process Development Center. They've just been licensing the production of cellulose nanofibrils. This is actually quite exciting in terms of building um, uh, using wood products for. Um, um, materials for everything from cups to packing material, packaging material that is um, um, uh, environmentally friendly, it's biodegradable, comes out of here. Really some very exciting things happening there. We see on the horizon uh, actually the potential for companies coming, wanting to come to move to Maine to connect with our process development center. And of course there's a lot coming out of the Advanced Structures uh, and Composite Center uh, including um, advanced infrastructure technologies. Now I'm going to stop for a second to say uh, instead of uh, um, going out of this and finding the latest version of this, I'm going to apologize for some typos that are here that Rob and I corrected this morning uh, that will still be here. So now that I realize I pulled up the penultimate version of this uh, slideshow. The other thing that, that's going on is that there's uh, interest in unpre at an unprecedented level from a private foundation, that's the Harold Alfond Foundation, in what's going on here at the University of Maine in terms of our, our relationships with um, companies and how, what we're doing in the commercialization space. Um, the, uh, so one uh, example of that is that the, the uh, Alfond Foundation uh, provided a significant um, gift uh, to create the um, uh, Alfon W2 Ocean Engineering Laboratory within uh, Advanced Structures and Composite Center. Again, there, that money for that came from a variety of sources, but uh, they gave us uh, quite a significant gift and it's named uh, 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 because of that, the size of the gift. Coincident with that, they uh, expressed interest in primarily working with uh, Vice President Jake Ward about you know, what, is, what is the university doing and how can they help us, that was their question, how can they help us uh, to advance um, uh, our, our impact on R&D in the state through uh, uh, accelerating the way we move things from research uh, into the marketplace. So some of the work that we did was provide in the last year was with some seed funding uh, from the Alfon Foundation. So they, one of the things they did was they provided some funding to assess our current portfolio uh, of intellectual property to look at what's ready to go to market, what uh, isn't. So that's, that's the context, and so uh, this was uh, over a year ago, now back in the spring of 16, uh, a lot of meetings and discussions about this moving into the summer. So President Hunter um, charged me with moving this forward, <clears throat> saying, look, um, what we, <clears throat> you know, we're moving in unprecedented uh, areas now. We've had success, we're having success at levels that we haven't before. In fact, I, I'll, I'll, I'll describe it the way uh, Cody Varami and our Vice President for Research and, and uh, Dean of Graduate Studies said, and he was a member of this team, he couldn't be here today, but uh, in looking at and coming in this summer and assessing what we do and how we've done, he said, you know, over the last 20 years, University of Maine, you know, you were, we were doing this stuff, we were kind of, um, um, uh, his words, not mine, a mom and pop shop figuring this stuff out. Well, we've gotten to a level that we're no longer dealing with things at a scope and scale that can be handled uh, at that level. We need to be thinking differently um, uh, to manage uh, really our success at this. Uh, and again, those of you who have been around the university a long time, uh, like I have, 
you know, you've seen with the investment that came with the MEIF money starting in the mid-90s, uh, mid this, this institution has transformed as a research institution. And in one, one of the significant ways is in building um, relationships and, and, uh, uh, with corporations in, the, in Maine and throughout the United States to have a more significant impact on our on ec uh, economic development than we have ever had historically. So anyway, to get back to this story, the President Hunter said, look, Jeff, um, I want you to do, uh, pull together folks and get to work on this. And she charged us, and some, the key, some of the key aspects she said was, said, look at, look at how we're set up here. Um, what's the governance st structure? Is this the ideal way that we should be set up to, to make sure that this is a priority at our institution and that um, we're positioned uh, to continue to grow? Um, I, I will say, because uh, she said it to me, and, and we've talked a different time, uh, the Office of Innovation and Economic uh, Development, led by uh, Jake Ward, uh, you know, they, they, they are performing like a 20-person operation, and there are two-person, uh, two to three people operation, depending on how you, you count it. They, they've done a tremendous uh, uh, amount here and been really moved the university. Well, let's look at the governance structure now. How do we create a, a structure that's inclusive, of the campus, but it and, and provides um, you know high-level guidance for uh, for growth and progress. She said, "Look, I want you to look at our policies and our practices, and how are, are they contemporary? Are they matching where uh, you know a, a research uh, university should be in the 21st century? And we want to look at different ways we might structure uh, both internally and also potentially uh, um, forming an external organization to help us." Uh, to do this more efficiently and be more responsive. So I said, sure, no problem. Um, so first thing I did uh, was get a team together, and we uh, ordained ourselves the commercialization working group. Uh, these are the people who, uh, who participated in that. And we started meeting last uh, summer, uh, summer of 2016. And um, you know, I won't again, bore you with all the details, but there was a, uh, you know, there was a bit of um, taking this charge and defining what exactly are we going to do, how, do, how are we going to achieve this. There was a bit of um, uh, people like uh, me being brought up to speed, for people who live and work this every day, like Chris Burton and, and Jake, uh, some education uh, uh, going, on, going along. So as we, we work, we said, okay, here's how we're going to go about this. We're going to look at the work as having four, um, four components to it. Um, one component is going to be to look at uh, our current portfolio of uh, intellectual property. Uh, there's a lot, there are patents that have been created here at the university. Um, they're in this uh, space, and, and I'll ask, uh, I won't ask them now, but uh, sometime you should ask Jake Ward to give you a nice description of the valley of death. And that's the, that's the, 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 uh, the path from an idea to market, and it, and it kind of goes like this, and it's getting things through that valley of death. Um, so we're looking at uh, intellectual property that we have, and one question is, you know, what, what is viable in terms of moving to market? And the other question is how and what resources do we need to accelerate that process? Right? Second consideration was, this was around structure. Said, look, you know, um, we're aware that many, or we said to ourselves, we're aware that many universities, many research universities have created research foundations that are separate 501c3s that, um, carry out some of these functions. Um, and they are designed to be in a connection between the university, a public institution, and uh, the private sector. So analogously, we have here the University of Maine Foundation, right, which is an independent uh, organization. It's got a president. It's got its own board of, uh, a board of directors. But it exists to serve the University of Maine. Right? So it, it handles our, our um, our endowed funds, that's its primary purpose. It moves scholarship dollars over every year and, and, and dollars for, uh, for professorships, et cetera. Um, would, a, would that kind of organization serve the university now? Have we reached a point of maturity where creating or, and activating a research foundation would, be, would help us? And if so, you know, what should it look like? Um, so that was one of the, the questions we wanted to look at. The third question we wanted to say was, OK, we're, we've been at this for a while. Uh, we've engaged with lots of um, companies. We've had a lot of our faculty and staff doing this work. We should ask them <laughs> what's working well, what are we not doing so well, what are the challenges in, for the companies, what are the challenges in working with the university 
to the faculty and staff, what are the challenges to you engaging this, in this kind of work? So we kind of label that, what's the experience of partners to date? So we can learn from that. And the, the fourth was really, um, all right, there's a variety of ways you can find out about best practices. You can read literature, you can con contact national organizations, et cetera, et cetera. We should do that uh, as well. So that, that's the four ways we went about it. So what I want to do is I'm going to kind of walk through each of these. I, uh, you can think of this as kind of a research paper. <clears throat> this is the method section. I'm going to just walk you through and say, this is what we did. And then I'll get to the key findings, okay, as opposed to doing it, because the key finding from one area interacts with another area, and it, it, it's artificial to, to break it apart. But I do want you to understand a bit about how we went about this. So let's talk about how do we go about reviewing the intellectual uh, property portfolio. As I mentioned earlier, we've been uh, in conversation with the Harold Alphonse Foundation. Uh, they provided us a, a generous grant of $100,000 to assist with this. So we're able to go out and bring in some external consultants to help us um, look at this. So, um, oops, <laughs> this was a slide I was going to delete, but I mean, he caught me. So, that. <laughs> so uh, uh, Chris um, looked at the portfolio and she said, okay, you know, let's look at it in segments. Uh, some of it referred to as our core resource portfolio, things that we've been at for a while, have a, quite a track record. One are what we call active one-offs, and we struggled to come up with a more flattering name for that, and I couldn't come up with it. That's why I was going to delete this slide, but now you caught me. So these are things that they're not necessarily part of a progression, but they're active, they're, they're exciting, they have potential. It's not clear whether they're part of a, a, a thing that will move forward, but they're active at this point. Newly disclosed technologies, these are uh, young, younger in the pipeline, things that faculty have, been, um, you know, you disclose to the Office of uh, Innovation Economic Development when you're developing this, what, what's happening there. And then some of the ones we refer to as twilight technologies, and uh, that was our ones for, these ones have been around for a while and have not moved on. And um, is this a way we, for us to look at it? So we, we, or we and again, the Royal Will Chris did this, most of this work, uh, segmented. And then <clears throat> we put out an RFP for a consulting organization, and we, uh, we actually, we, we hired Tremonti Consulting Group to help with this. But we also did some other things to look at the portfolio because, because of the, um, the different kinds of uh, information or the different kinds of uh, properties that were in there. But the, the, a chunk of the work was done by Tremonti and we chose 30, um, 30 assets, 30 intellectual property assets. We asked them to re review them, think about developing how you would market uh, each of these to, to advance them, to do an, an, an independent evaluation. We also took advantage of uh, this company called Vortex, uh, Vortex Group. And this was, to be honest, this was opportunistic. This was a company that the uh, Office of Innovation and Economic Development had worked with some years ago. They came back and said, look, our product is, you know, we've improved our product. Would you, you want to, tr why don't you try it again? So we got a free trial. And um, so uh, we uh, ran the, um, I think it was just one thing, is it all right, Chris? Through the, in, yeah, the invitation evaluator, an online um, way of looking at evaluating these properties for their potential for marketing. And then one of our, or not one of our, it is our largest um, endeavor in this sphere is the offshore wind work being done at the, uh, 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 at the Advanced Structures and Composite Center. And there's been a lot of work done on patenting there. Uh, there's a whole, they, they have their own portfolio of patents associated with the offshore wind work. Given, uh, so, and there was a, you know, a, um, uh, I was described a plan or an assessment of that. What we wanted to do was have an independent group come in and look at that, to take a second, look, really a fresh look to say, okay, here we are at this point in time. Let's look at the way these patents are structured, the, the, um, uh, the relationships with the university, and give us an opinion about that. We, uh, the law firm of Errol Dana down in Portland does this kind of work, and they were hired to do that part of it. Okay, that's method there. What do we do in terms of considering the research foundations or other structures? That was actually part of the RFP we put out to the consulting group, so um, we, we did end up back with uh, the Tremonti group again. But what we did was we articulated some questions. We said, okay, you know, what are the reasons to create such an entity? Why, do you, why, why have research universities, some, created research foundations? Right? What, what purposes do they serve? What are the risks uh, in doing that? What are the challenges you have, uh, in legal challenges, 
public perception challenges uh, operationally, about the, their connection between this independent uh, organization and the university. Um, one thing we discovered on our own was that uh, while there are many research foundations associated with research universities around the United States, no two look alike. <laughs> we, our own looking, so we said, okay, then what's the possible range of activities? If we were going to uh, activate and create a re research foundation here, what, what ought it to do? If that's the right way of saying it. What, what do we want it um, to do? And then we said, look, look, let's compare that to the, to the status quo, if you will, compared to the way uh, our current operations, um, which ones would, would we, should we consider transferring uh, to the foundation? Is there an urgency to the transfer? And then how do we assess and by what criteria whether this model is working? Is this a good way, uh, a good way to go? So as I said, we, we once again brought in this, uh, uh, our, as part of the same contract, this Tremonti Consulting Group helped us with this. Um, we asked them to look at our current uh, processes and activities related to commercialization. Uh, we said, okay, how does that compare to benchmark institutions? Uh, we asked them to make a recommendation regarding a research foundation or similar entities, uh, and then to recommend how that should be organized. Not to make the decision for us, but to lay out if we were to do this, why, what would we, and what would you recommend in terms of how it's uh, structured? This is some of their method. They uh, came to campus, uh, met with a lot of stakeholders, as, and also folks from outside of the university. Um, they would come in. They gave presentations to groups, got feedback and discussion based on, you know. Um, Part of this was based on people's experience in working with the university and people at the university and their experience in this area. And they uh, produced a report for us, which am I correct, is, on, is it on our website, Robin? Uh, yes, it's, it's linked to the yeah. forum. So the, uh, this report is on the website, and the, the Tremonti's full report is linked to the website on the same, on the same place. And then we also, they also went and um, talked with uh, senior leadership at peer institutions that have these um, uh, types of organizations and, and, you know, had a conversation with them. What's working? What's not working? What are the challenges in setting this up to try to inform us? All right. Third, uh, third line of this was, again, evaluating the experience of people who've been engaged in this so far. Uh, <clears throat> again, using some of the funds we had from the Alphon Foundation, we were able to bring in uh, Shanna Cox, who runs a company called Project Tipping Point, and her, we, we asked her to help us do this assessment. And she came up with a, um, uh, you know, two, two parallel or complementary, I guess is the right word, complementary strategies and two parallel groups. So she, her two strategies were running survey and, and focus group. And then the two, are, uh, two sets of people she wanted to work with were the faculty and staff at the university and also industry partners. So we sent a survey, or she, on our behalf, sent a survey to uh, all, all faculty at the university, faculty and staff, um, uh, and um, all faculty and staff we'd identified uh, as working in the, you know, these areas. Uh, got a, we had 188 responses, 88% were for, um, that should say, identified as tenure track faculty. That's an editing thing there, but 88% uh, were tenure track faculty. We then gave her quite a list of industry partners. These were primarily people who had had some kind of contact with us uh, in working on R&D development. But, but we also add to that companies that we were aware of that we thought, you know, that's the kind of company where we think they should have contact with us. We have something to, to offer them so that we could gather information. And the, the, the range was from companies that had pretty minimal contact with us to those who'd worked in, with, lab, with researchers for years. Okay. So, what she did was she surveyed all these folks uh, electronically, and then we, she brought together subgroups for focused discussions. Um, and so we had uh, these focus group interviews. Uh, 34 humane faculty and staff participated, and 23 industry partners. Some of the interviews had to be done one on one just for practical reasons, but uh, she, get, she did uh, that for the data gathering. Finally, the fourth strategy we did was, trying to, was to identify best practices, and our, our methods there. Uh, we we uh, asked the Education Advisory Board, could they develop a, a research brief for us? That's part of what this company does is they review literature and produce, um, produce white papers, basically. Uh, they went in their archives and pulled out some for us, and then they customized uh, a re research brief for us. So we were able to look at the literature that way. Um, 
We looked at peer institutions. There's, well, I can't help but point it out. There's a typo. Um, all apologies, wrong place for apostrophe. But um, look at our peer institutions. And actually, Robin uh, from my office uh, did a lot of this work going online, looking at their websites. How are they organized? What are their policies? Um, so that we had a, a comparison point for the University of Maine. And then Larry Llewellyn, who was at that time our Vice President for HR, and Chris Burton primarily worked on this together, looking at some of the HR issues around um, compliance with uh, uh, federal uh, and state policies, uh, how we might look at this and, and what are the practices around promotion and tenure, and um, what are the kind of ways to look at incentivizing uh, engagement in this kind of work, and how do we look at um, compensation issues? Is there, there, particularly when you're getting in, looking at R&D work and you're working for the private sector, uh, that, you know, that's important work for us to do. Our salaries tend to be low compared to the private sector, uh, and we're not, a, um, uh, we're not an employment agency for the private sector where they get to try people out and scoop them away from us, at least we try not to be. Um, so how do we look at creating uh, competitive compensation uh, for our, our research scientists? And then uh, uh, Chris primarily attended some national meetings or in organizations um, uh, you know, that, that are engaged in this kind of work, did networking around, uh, around the country. So the result of this was this report that I, I, uh, I showed you, or I quickly showed you, uh, and again, it's available for you on the, on the website. Um, we, we presented this to President Hunter back in August. Um, and so what I want to do now is I'm going to summarize what we think were some of the key findings out of the report, or out of our work, and then um, talk about some of the, um, the directions uh, that we're, we're headed. So with respect to key findings, with respect to our IP uh, uh, portfolio, uh, the Tremonti review, and as well as looking with the other, uh, other methods, uh, about a quarter of, our, of the 30 that they, we had them um, look at uh, they felt really had real potential to move to commercialization now, or it, with, with the right kind of investment and support uh, could, could move to that. So that was helpful for us to know. But actually, I think in terms of the long-term process, that the more important thing we got out of that was that we, we, could, we had an experience with the, the value of bringing in an independent third party uh, to work on this. Uh, they, you know, when they reviewed something, they uh, prepared a report. They sent that back to the faculty member or team of people involved in it, and then we heard from those folks. Most of, the, nearly all of the feedback we got from faculty was, was this was really helpful. It was really constructive to see how uh, someone looked at this. Really constructive their ideas about how to uh, uh, move this forward. Um, so that was uh, that was uh, very helpful. It was helpful. We felt um, our team that it was. Um, it's a different perspective to bring in an independent person to look at this. Because uh, the faculty, of course, you know, all of us, we think our ideas are brilliant and everyone should recognize that and all ready to go uh, if people would just wake up. Um, and then you have someone like uh, Jake or Chris, they've often been working closely with the faculty member and they're not, they don't have quite the distance that you might want to uh, have. You bring in someone independently to say, I don't know about this. or why would you do that, or who do you think the market is for this, or how would you move this? It, it, it's a helpful process. So that, you know, learning from that um, is a piece of what we're thinking about in terms of moving forward. Now, we don't want to do it in this bulk the way we did it here, but to be able to say, okay, when, a, when work moves to a certain point, wh at what point do we bring in an independent person to look at it to help us figure out what the next uh, steps are? We also learned and, uh, you know, I guess confirmed our suspicions that there are, uh, you know, there are real advantages to uh, uh, creating a research foundation that has um, this uh, independence from a university, but its sole purpose for existence is to support uh, the research university. Uh, you know, we, we found the reason that universities are creating these, they provide some flexibility in retention and compensation um, for employees. Um, for some of them, um, they are very helpful with respect to marketing uh, of resources, and we feel that that's something, we, and I'll get to that what the partners told us, but marketing what the university has to offer uh, to potential partners, um, that uh, it's a potential way to provide support services for faculty and staff who are involved in this, 
Um, and because it's independent of the, um, the university, which is um, a great thing, but also quite a big bureaucracy, uh, there's greater flexibility in be able to respond and work with companies um, than solely. So, th so there were pretty convincing evidence, we felt, for moving forward uh, with the development of a, of a research foundation. When we talked, to, most of the feedback that uh, industry partners who had worked with the University of Maine uh, gave was quite positive. They would typically talk about uh, individuals or sets of individuals who they you know, enjoyed work with. It was helpful, it was uh, productive. Um, uh, and nonetheless, we did learn that the university has got quite a ways to go in creating this kind of explicit culture around uh, commercialization as a significant piece of what, uh, of what we do. Um, the business partners highlighted the need for improved communication and marketing of services. One of the interesting things that happened at these focus groups is that uh, one person from one business would be at the focus group and they would have worked with one, one organization with the, the university. Someone else would have worked with someone else. And so as they talk about examples, they were looking and saying, well, I didn't know the university did that. Uh, I thought they just did this. Right? So we haven't done a good job uh, of marketing the array of uh, ways that people could connect with us uh, as a university. There, there are some uh, suggestions they have about improving the way we deliver services and, and the array of services. Um, I think that relates mostly to my first point about marketing, but they're looking for a little wider array of services. From the UMaine faculty, uh, they expressed the need for clearer, clear or clearer policies about around uh, commercialization. They want to be able to to be clearly understood and easy to find. Um, not surprisingly, looking for additional resources to help them get out of the valley of death and into the, uh, the, the market uh, place. How do, we pull, how do we do that? And again, you know, asking a faculty member who's an expert in this area that, that they are working in to also then understand how to move things to market, et cetera, is, is not reasonable. We need to bring other resources to that. Um, and then we heard some things about aligning in the incentive structures so that um, you know, people are, are rewarded uh, for engaging in this kind of, uh, in kind of activity. In our view of the literature and looking at other institutions, we find, in fact, that there are a whole variety of ways to, get uh, to create incentive structures for faculty and staff uh, to, to move into and be engaged in commercialization. Um, there's kind of a list of things we found in the report uh, from other, other institutions. And then we, we also learned that best practices uh, with respect to some of these things are going to require um, some changes to some of the university main system policies. Not wholesale dramatic changes, but there are some language changes that have to do with changing uh, law and policy. All right. So one of the things that, um, so I'm sorry, now I'm getting to the recommendations that come out of this. One of the things that we recommended was that we would create uh, an Innovation and Economic Development Council. Now, I, I'm, uh, you know, um, in putting this slideshow together, I thought, well, geez, you know, I talked about a year's worth of work and presenting and then say, okay, so what came out of this? Oh, we're forming a new committee. So that's not very exciting. So I want to make the point about why we think this is important um, and, and also a little bit about how it'll function. So part of what we realize is that if we want commercialization, and I'm using that term very broadly, um, this knowledge transfer, connections with the private, uh, private sector to be um, you know, elevated in, its, in the strategic thinking at the university, we have to elevate it organizationally. And so our vision for the Innovation and Economic, De uh, uh, sorry, Innovation and Economic Development Council is that it reports directly to the president. Uh, the president appoints people, starting with people in her, in her cabinet, but then also key uh, other folks involved. That this group is advisory directly to the president. And our, our viewpoint, our, our, um, our, uh, our model for this is that um, the advisory board, the, the economic council, you know, takes on a task. And in our report, we put a series of uh, tasks that we thought should be the first year, probably two years worth of agenda items. But we're not asking the council to implement. We're asking the complement to, to deal with it, give the president a set of recommendations, who then says, okay, you know, to Cody Varamian, I need you to take charge and do this. To me, you need to take charge and do that. 
so that others are put in, tar in, in, in responsible for, for doing this. And then, of course, we need an, a, enough breadth of involvement. Now, on the, edit, on the contemporary edited version of this slide, I've got these things summarized for you right here. Um, but those are the key points that uh, we wanted to make. So we formed this council. Here it is uh, now. It's quite a lengthy group. Um, we thought through very carefully who should be on here, not in terms of names, but in terms of positions. So uh, in the report, you'll see we felt that these are the kinds of uh, positions. And this slide doesn't capture quite well, but some, <coughs> with respect to, the <coughs> to some of the positions, it's not, I'll, I'll choose, it's not, um, uh, well, I'll choose these two deans. It's not, uh, well, we should have Ivan and Dana on. It was, okay, we need representation from the dean's council. And it shouldn't be a single uh, dean. We should have two, and we should look at across different areas of the university. So we'll start, our initial would be with uh, the dean of the main business school and the dean of the college of engineering. We didn't say, oh, Habib has got to be on there. What we said was we need uh, a, a center, a research center director. Okay. So we did some work around this. Uh, one of these faculty members is a, is a uh, chosen by the faculty senate. I can't remember which one. Um, but we knew we needed to partner with the faculty senate. So there was, th my, my point is, uh, we thought through carefully um, the kinds of people and then, and then populated it. Eventually, if we're, when, once we create and activate our research foundation, there'll be a representative from the foundation. And because we did this work before the partnership was really, um, uh, sorry, the, the, before the change was made from University of Maine Machais to become uh, a regional campus for the UMaine, um, we don't yet have a representative from there, but eventually uh, we will. This group has, we, we only, well, the president uh, sent out invitations, uh, I guess I did, uh, on her behalf um, this fall. Um, we, we, we've just formed it, and the first meeting will be soon. I, um, uh, Cody and Jake are, are I'm sorry, and uh, Jason is working on uh, setting this up. Okay, the second big recommendation is that, we, yeah, we need to go ahead and move on creating the research foundation. Now, Many of you know, uh, I've been talking about creating the foundation that the University of Maine actually has a, a research foundation. Um, it was created about four years ago. 2013. 2013? In 2013, so five years ago. Um, it, uh, so at that time, the board of directors were um, the president, Paul Ferguson at that time, Janet Waldron as the Vice President for Administration and Finance and Jake Ward, um, our Vice President for Innovation and Economic Development. <clears throat> With the changeover in positions, uh, the board changed. Now, of course, President Hunter, uh, Jake has continued, and Ryan Lowe um, uh, is the third board member. But the Research Foundation has not been active. So, in other words, the board, there's a board on paper. It doesn't meet. Um, there's no money in the Research Foundation. Our recommendation is to activate it. So. Um, so steps are being taken to do that. It's not currently active. There, uh, there will be a board meeting very soon of this small board. Uh, Jake and, work, and working from the Tremonti report and out of our discussions, out of the uh, commercialization working group, we have a series of, um, of steps to uh, take to um, uh, reorganize the foundation in the ways that we've envisioned. But, but um, we can't just do those. The board has to agree to those. So the first step is for the board to expand. They'll have a meeting. They'll vote to expand, I hope. Uh, and uh, we'll bring in the expanse membership. Then there's a series of steps about how we want to uh, put the, the, the uh, foundation into action. The third, the third thing we've recommended is, OK, you know, um, if we're going to do some of this work, particularly creating this, uh, this research foundation, we need resources. Um, for that type of work. We need to find uh, resources for investment. So our first place is local. Uh, the RRF is the Research Reinvestment Fund. That's the University of Maine system. Created this fund uh, about three and a half years ago. Uh, there was, it's $2.1 million. Uh, and it is, uh, the purpose of it is to invest in research, but research that serves the Maine economy. That's the essential um, uh, charge from it. We've been uh, operating these funds for three years now. There's grant programs that go out, et cetera, uh, to, to do this. They're not just to the University of Maine. They're uh, to the University of Maine system. 
Uh, but again, as a research university, we've, uh, we've uh, received the lion's share of, of those funds. The Board of Trustees committed to these funds for five years, so there's the rest of this year and one more year. Um, our um, concern is that that uh, investment continue and perhaps grow, and our strategy is to start doing the groundwork for that. So uh, an opportunity created itself in some conversations between the uh, Chancellor Page and myself and Chancellor Page and, and, uh, uh, and Jake Ward, and uh, we uh, agreed to organize on the Chancellor's behalf a, a commercialization summit, which is going to be on January 9th. Um, faculty uh, who participated in the uh, focus groups will be invited, business partners will be invited, um, key system people will be invited, but importantly, we're inviting Board of Trustee members uh, to, this, um, to this meeting. Somewhat of it is going to be a working meeting, but some of it is to uh, educate the board about what we've done so far, demonstrate to the board that we're poised uh, to continue to move forward, and to demonstrate to the board the need for the research reinvestment funds if they're serious about their key priority, which I showed you at the top, is an investment in re uh, research and economic development um, for, uh, for the state of Maine. So what we're doing essentially is working on assuring that those funds um, continue. The second strategy we have for uh, bringing resources is uh, to continue our dialogue with the Harold Alfon Foundation. At the outset, um, this $100,000, $100, um, I guess, seed grant they gave us uh, was their response to a much larger proposal that Jake had uh, worked for them. Um, this lays the groundwork for us to return to them to, to pursue uh, uh, additional funds. The, um, they have been provided with a report about our work. They're pleased uh, uh, with what we've been doing. Um, we do need to coordinate with this with other initiatives that the Alphonse are, are funding for the system, and that's, uh, a, to put it frankly, a tricky ground, but we're, we're working that ground um, uh, to make sure, or, not, or to, uh, to um, yeah, assure that these funds can come into the Research Foundation in the way that we want, and we can use them in the way that we've, uh, the way that we've outlined. The last thing that uh, we've done is to look at some of our processes around uh, industry partnerships and improve some of our, our pieces. And this slide, I'll go through kind of quickly because it's really, this is, you're seeing a draft form. But we're looking at uh, the, the guidelines primarily around, um, around student IP. There's some changes that we need to make. We, we brought those up to speed. We brought the Dean's Council involved. They're now with the university's uh, attorney. We're looking at the IP policy language, um, uh, and, and we need to make some changes to make them comply with current, uh, current law. Uh, we're looking at the way that we uh, set up industri industry engagement um, uh, so that we're more successful, make it easier for the business to connect with us. And we're looking at faculty professional development opportunities. We started this fall uh, with a training around commercialization we did in fall 2017. This spring, we're going to be doing the first commercialization accelerator work. That's where we're taking and working with uh, faculty who are involved in the uh, intellectual property that was seen, determined to be uh, ready or primed for market and bringing some resources to help them to move that through uh, out the other side of the pipeline. And again, I'm going to go through this one quickly because we were very careful about how we edited the language to make it read better than that, and <laughs> that's not how it read. So, those are the steps that, that we've taken. Again, I know I've gone through a, a, lot, of, a lot of material, um, and we're, you know, we're happy as a team to answer uh, any questions. Um, but you can tell we're trying to approach this from a variety of angles, uh, and um, we're looking for, uh, um, you know, it's, a, it's an ongoing process. The innovation, I'm sorry, yeah, the Innovation and Economic Development Council is a way to continue to have focus on, on this at the university as a priority. When we talked about this idea, the idea was to say, well, we have, we have the University Research Council, which brings folks around and serves primarily as a consulting to the uh, Vice President for Research. We have the University Teaching Council, brings people around from the university looking at that part of our mission, primarily uh, reporting to me. And we want to have the commercialization um, group, I'm sorry, the, the Innovation Economic Development Council 
to be reporting, to, uh, connecting to the president. So this is elevated uh, in our organizational structure to, to signal that this is uh, uh, a high priority and that we have mechanisms to continue to work on this. 